In this video we're going to talk about basic properties of exponents and we're going to make it where the exponents are just positive whole numbers. Um, exponents can also be negative numbers, they can also be fractions, they can be decimals, um, they can be basically just about anything. So, But we'll start with the basic case on this one. So all an exponent really is, it's just a shorthand way of writing something. So suppose I have 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. Um, well, notice I have 5 threes. Every time I'm multiplying something by itself a, a rather large number of times, I don't want to write it out every single time. So the way we write this compactly is 3 raised to the fifth power. So basically it says you have five, or excuse me, three multiplied by itself five times. And this gives us one of our first basic rules. It says if you have a number, a raised to a power m, and we multiply this by a raised to the power of n, it says what we need to do to simplify that is to add the exponents. So for example, if we wanted to simplify, say, 3 to the 4th times 3 to the 2nd, we'll simply combine that and have 3 to the 6th. And if you think about it, this makes sense because 3 to the 4th is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. You've got 4 of those. 3 squared is 3 times 3. Well, if you count them up, how many 3's do I have being multiplied by themselves? Well, I have 6, and that's what this rule says. Our next basic rule says that if you have a number raised to an m, the m power divided by that same number raised to the n power, and I'm going to box this one in up here before I forget, so this is an important property. It says you can simplify this by taking a and you subtract the exponents. You take the top exponent and subtract away the bottom one. So again to maybe kind of convince you this by example, if I had 3 to the third, or let's make it 3 to the fourth over 3 squared, well that means I have 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. I've got 3 times 3 on the bottom. If I cancel two of those out, what am I left with? I'm left with 3 squared on top, which is the same thing I would have gotten if I had taken the power 4 minus 2. So this does seem to work out. Let's look at a few more basic properties of exponents here, and then we'll move on to some more complicated examples. Suppose I have well, the next property, and then we'll do an example. It says if you have a raised to the power of m, and then we raise that to the power of n, this time you multiply those two powers, m and n, together. So suppose I have 2 to the third raised to the, let's say, oh, second power. Well, remember, I've got something squared that means I have it multiplied by itself twice. And 2 to the third power is just a shorthand way of writing 2 times 2 times 2. I've got another one, 2 times 2 times 2. Well, how many 2's do I have all together? I've got 6 of them that are being multiplied all together. And that's the same thing had we just multiplied the powers at the very beginning. We would have also gotten 2 to the sixth power. Okay, so just another little basic property here. And a variation on this is what if I have, say, a times b raised to the m power. In this case, if you have two things in the parentheses that are being multiplied, you'll take the first one and raise it to the power and multiply that by the second one raised to that power. This is another basic exponential rule that you'll want to know. And to maybe convince you that this is in fact valid, suppose I have 2x raised to the third power. 
Well, again, that means I have 2x times 2x times 2x. I've got three of those, because again, it's being raised to the third power. I can reorder this, since this is all multiplication, I can re, you know, just again, reorder it. So I can make this 2 times 2 times 2, x times x times x, and I'm left with 2 to the third power. I have three twos being multiplied, x to the third power. I have three x's being multiplied as well. So just another little basic rule that you'll want to know. And honestly, we're not talking about it, but these rules will hold. It doesn't matter whether we're using positive exponents, whether we're using negative exponents. Um, whatever the power is, this is going to be true. Last little case, um, and it's just a variation on this one. Suppose I have a divided by b raised to the m power. Well, it says in that case you're going to get a raised to the m power over b raised to the m power. And hopefully I can convince you with an example just like the last one. Suppose I have this time 2 divided by x raised to the third power. Well, that means I have 2 over x times 2 over x times 2 over x. Well, I've got 2 times 2 times 2 on top. That's 2 to the third. I have x times x times x on the bottom. That leaves me with x to the third. Obviously, you could simplify down 2 to the third and get just plain old 8. But we'll just leave it like it is for now, again, just to illustrate this this power, or excuse me, this property. So let's do a couple more complicated examples, kind of combining these rules. And we'll do a bunch of them here. So suppose I have 2 raised to the 4th raised to the 3rd. Well, this is the property where if it's in the parentheses, I just multiply. So I'll get 2 to the 12th. And if you wanted to, you could multiply that out 2 times 2 times 2, 12 times. But I don't want to, and I don't have a calculator in front of me. So we'll just leave it just like that. Suppose I have. Oh. Sorry, somebody's calling me here. Let's turn that off. Suppose I have 2x raised to the third power. Well, again, each thing gets the power, so that's 2 to the third, x to the third. And in this case, I will simplify it down. 2 to the third, that's 2 times 2 times 2. That'll give me 8. And x to the third, I can't really simplify that down, so I'll just leave it just like it is. All right, let's keep going here. Suppose I have x to the fourth raised to the third power over x squared. Well, you have to be careful. You can't just cancel things out immediately because the thing in the denominator, it's not the whole thing being raised to the third power, only the x to the fourth. But if I simplify that, if I use the multiplication property, 4 and 3 is 12 over x to the second. And now the idea is I can subtract exponents. So top minus bottom, that's 12 minus 2. That'll leave me with x to the tenth power. Let's do some more of these here. Suppose I have y to the fifth raised to the third power y to the third power squared. And suppose that's divided by y to the fourth raised to the fourth power. Well, again, if we simplify this, I'm going to simplify the first part. So if I multiply these two numbers, the 5 and the 3, I'll get y to the 15th. I'll get a y to the sixth power on the other part. 
If I use my multiplication property in the denominator, 4 times 4 is 16. And now there's a bunch of ways you can simplify this. I'm going to do the stuff in the top. I'll get y to the 21st power. The 16 is still hanging out on the bottom. But now I can use my cancellation property as before. So if I take 21 minus 16, I'm going to be left with y to the 5th. Whoops, got a little cut off there. y to the 5th is my solution. Let's do one more of these. Suppose I have x squared y to the 3rd over, let's say, x to the 4th all raised to the 5th power. Well, the first thing I'm going to do on this one, since it's all being raised to the 5th power, I'm going to simplify inside the parentheses. So let's see. Actually, yeah, this is okay. So I've got y to the 3rd on top. Oops, I wrote y to the 5th. So if I take the the top power, actually this one's going to be maybe a little trickier. So let's think about this as being x times x. On the bottom I have four x's. I can actually cancel out two of the x's on top so that I'm left with y to the third on the bottom. I have x squared still in the bottom. Again, I've got two of them raised to the fifth power. And again, now if I use my multiplication property, I just take the 3 and the 5 and get y to the 15th. I do the same thing on the bottom, and I'll get x to the 10th power. And that'll be my final answer in this case. So here are some basic properties of exponentials. Again, you can use fractional exponents. You can have negative exponents. Um, and I'm definitely going to do some more examples of those in some other videos. So definitely take a look at my website and you can find some other more complicated examples if these are a little too easy for you.